Gray water tank odor in an RV can really stink. It's worse than you might think, and it can be very elusive to find the source. Well, we recently had exactly that problem, a very unusual place that gray water tank odor was coming from. Today, we're gonna to show you how we found it and how we fixed it. We've talked before about how bad gray water can smell. Now, most people might think that black water is the only odor issue when it comes to holding tank problems. But actually, after you've been out boondocking for a while and you have a high concentration of food particles and body oils and soap in a smaller amount of water, gray water can really smell bad. And when it gets into the living area in the RV, it can be really unpleasant. Now, there are things we've talked about before that are designed to keep gray water tank smells out of the RV. One of those are 360 roof vents. Those are designed to draw the air up and out of the gray tank and keep it from coming into the RV. We installed those on our RV years ago and they've always worked really well. Another thing RVs have to keep odor from coming up out of the gray tank is exactly the same as in a sticks and bricks house. And that is of course a P-trap where water stays between the tank or the sewer system and the sink so that the odor can't come up and out. That water is a barrier to prevent odors from coming through. And of course, that's the same in a regular house as in an RV and all the sinks and the shower have those. One other item we made a video about that stops odor from coming in are what are called air admittance valves. Those sit near each sink underneath the sink actually in the plumbing line and what they're designed to do is to allow air to enter the plumbing system as you run water down your sink drain. It prevents it from siphoning the water in the P-trap out so that you don't end up of course with those smells coming back up and out through the P-trap. So two of the most common places you might have a problem is if your roof fence aren't working correctly or you don't have good roof fence or if your air admittance valves have failed. But if you're getting an odor anyway you have to figure out where could it be coming from. And the natural places to look are where there are openings in the plumbing system, like in the drain or in the air admittance valve. You wouldn't necessarily think to look in places where there are solid pipes, because if a pipe broke, it would also leak water. So this is where the mystery started for us. We didn't have any leaking water. We couldn't determine that there was anything wrong with the air admittance valves. It would happen when we would pull away from a campsite after we'd been boondocking. That was the most common time. The strongest smell we would get is after we had filled up our gray water tank halfway or more, and there was lots of gray water in there. And then we would drive away from a boondocking spot. Right when we started driving, that's when the smell was the worst. Not so much on the highway, and it wouldn't happen when we were pulling away from a full hookup campground with an empty gray tank. Now that part makes sense. If you don't have gray water in your tank, you're less likely to get gray water smell. But the mystery was, why are we smelling it when we first start driving and then not so much once we get out on the highway? So what we would do is pull away from a boondocking spot and immediately the smell would happen and John would get up while I was driving and he would come back and start sniffing all around the sinks underneath the kitchen sink, in the kitchen sinks, underneath and in the, both bathroom sinks, in the shower, looking for any source of the smell. And then we would get out on the highway and the smell would mostly dissipate. It was baffling. The smell didn't seem to be coming from under the sinks, so that meant it likely wasn't the air admittance valves, which were brand new and unlikely to have failed anyway. But one way to check that is to take a Ziploc bag and rubber band it over the top of the air admittance valve and completely seal it closed. If the air admittance valve is leaking, that will stop it from allowing odor to come in. That's a good test. But the smell wasn't really coming from under the sink so much. It seemed to be coming from in and around the kitchen sink. And that didn't make any sense at all because we knew that water had to be in the P-trap blocking that odor from coming up. Well, then we noticed that it also seemed to be coming from behind this slide right here in the space between the wall and where the slide comes in. And then we realized that there's an opening behind the sink. 
we can see back here, there's an opening that goes out the back and you're actually seeing the wall behind the kitchen sink here. Now, a number of years ago, about 10 years ago, we made a video explaining how that plumbing works. That black pipe right there is the drain line from the kitchen sink and our kitchen happens to be in a slide. That means that the drain has to have a flexible section of pipe, allowing it to move as the slide comes in. And that's exactly what that line does. It flexes out and in. About 10 years ago, we found water in this area down here and we replaced that. That used to be a white flexible PVC line and we replaced it with a black one because it leaked from all the flexing, it caused a crack. Well, we assumed that wasn't the problem this time because there was no leaking. Well, it turns out that in the 10 years that that black flexible line has been in there, a crazy thing happened that we might never have found if not for the odor. And that is the top of the pipe cracked open. And the reason it wasn't leaking was simple. It opened up on top because of the shape of the pipe. And that meant that it was basically an aqueduct instead of a pipe. The bottom was still intact and the water would flow through it without spilling out. And also when the slide is out, that would close up so odor wouldn't come out. That's why we never smelled anything when we were parked. It's because when the slide goes out, it flexes that gap closed and prevented odor from coming out. The only problem would happen when the slide was in. When the slide came in, it opened that gap wide so that any odor from down in the gray tank could get out. With that gaping hole in our drain line going down to the gray tank, maybe you're wondering, why weren't we smelling it on the highway? Well, we figured that out. It's because once we got up to speed, the rapid flow of air across the 360 siphon vents up on the roof created such a strong updraft through the vents that it pulled the air out rather than letting it come in here. That's why we only smelled it when we were going slowly. As soon as we got fast enough, that airflow pulled the smell out the roof and prevented it from coming in here. Now, that's not a clue we could have probably used to figure out what was happening but looking back now, we can see exactly why we were only smelling it at low speeds right after boondocking. Even though this exact situation isn't one you're likely to encounter in your RV, because every manufacturer uses different techniques to connect slide out plumbing to the main system in the RV, and even Numar probably has changed their technique, I hope by now, it might give you an idea where to start looking when you have a frustrating and elusive problem in your RV whether it's plumbing, electrical, or anything else. It can require you to put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and start to think about what might be going on that doesn't make sense. Who would think that you would have a plumbing line crack wide open and not leak water, but allow air to come in? Well, this is an example of that. So next time you've got any problem in your RV, think outside the box, try to figure out when it happens, why it happens, how it happens, and maybe that'll lead you to a little less smell coming out of your gray tank than we've been having for the last couple of months while we've frustrated trying to figure out what was wrong. If you're interested in receiving more useful tips about RVing, we put out blog posts multiple times a week. If you haven't already subscribed, visit thervgeeks.com and subscribe, and you'll see all the information we put out, not just in video format, but in written form as well. We hope you'll consider joining us. And also, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please consider doing that now. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. We're so excited that we figured it out. We hope this helps you figure out a problem with your RV too. As always, safe travels and thanks for watching.